Hello everybody, good morning, good morning everybody. We are pouring a wood grain pattern floor and no, I have not done a wood grain pattern floor at all the way we're trying today. We're using our um, Diamond Flex Epoxy, which is just a more flexible epoxy than standard, but this is an epoxy we put on a lot of, this is an epoxy we put on a lot of um, shop floors and places that are gonna take really high impacts or um, where there's a lot of thermal shock like exterior and stuff like this, so amazing epoxy. Um, we have quite a few colors and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna be putting a copper base down. So I'm gonna start out um, by pouring my epoxy and yes, there is a little bit on these walls and that is because I've poured this in here about 10 times just for fun with classes. So now it's your guys' turn. Always run this, something like that. I'm gonna put a whole entire base layer down. I have a few different tools because I am not exactly sure how I'm going to try to get this on. So now if you do want to cut in nice and easy, it's very easy to cut into a wall. You just have to be patient with it, as you can see. Nice and slow and just work that bead on front of your T-bar. If you notice, the T-bar is like a phenolic roller, but of course it doesn't roll. It slides, which also helps remove a lot of debris. And this really helps gauge your coating. Just, I usually leave a little pile on there initially. So it can just flow up into my door jams and wall. And then I'll come back down it and pull excess off. How is everybody today? Welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody. We're in Grand Junction, Colorado, and we're just having fun, kind of doing a floor real quick and prepping our office for next week's class. We're gonna have a really fun class here. It's gonna be three days of super hands-on. We look forward to seeing our big crew we're gonna party with. You know what, I, we were seeing that a lot of people were claiming that they were not getting our live alerts. And I don't know if that's because TikTok was getting kind of depositioned in Congress or the Senate or what was happening. I don't, I don't know why they weren't, but yeah, nobody was getting our lives. And I apologize, that definitely wasn't us. I called TikTok and told them, hey, you guys better straighten this crap out. And it seemed like they didn't even know who I was. It just didn't even matter to anybody there. My business, my years of business with them. Okay, we'll just pretend this corner is really perfect even though I know it's not, but we just, sometimes we squint. This is a classroom. Everything in my building is meant as a learning opportunity, including me. You know what? I am a happy, happy painter. I don't know how modern I am, but I sure am a happy painter. Thank you guys. If you want your basement done, call our office. We have installers all over the world, really. We have about 5,000 installers and about 3,500 of them are for the, from the U.S. that we have trained. The corners, I'm just going to slowly cut this in, but this is going to be quite the project here you guys are going to see. I'm going to be doing a wood grain pattern on this, so this might take me a minute. And I'm wanting to, I'm coming back around, pulling my excess back out. We did um, run a black epoxy on here, but you don't always need to do that. This is just an area we just keep going over and over just for fun. Not needed. Pennsylvania, yeah, we have some installers out in Pennsylvania and some nearby as well. I'm certain of that. Yeah, this copper is banging. You don't like this copper? Color it, dump it, and smooth it out. That's what your mom says, but yes, I do. That's basically how it is, guys. Okay. 
Pittsburgh. Man, uh, Vermont? Yeah, I bet you we do have some Vermont installers and dealers. Connecticut. We are the manufacturer. This is Diamond Coat and Countertop Epoxy. You are on our page. This is Countertop Epoxy, which is our DIY brand line. And we also run a commercial installs side that's called Diamond Coat. That's all commercial grade products. And everybody that's in a Diamond Coat installer has gone to our Diamond Coat installer training. Good morning, everybody. There is a lot of familiar faces in here this morning. Thanks for tuning back in, y'all. Thanks for loving us. No, thanks, though. There, thank you for caring about health. This right here, there is no toxic fumes in this specific product. But just remember, I, I cover this in a lot of lives, and I'm kind of glad. I'm really happy to see people getting a little more cognizant and caring about their health. So I, um, we spent quite a long time with our products, making them truly zero VOC, which this product right here is a truly zero VOC product that we're pouring, and meaning that there's no volatile organic content, and we are in a very well ventilated room as well. But a lot of companies now are lying about the organic content and the evaporative content in their products because they can, and they can still advertise it as zero VOC. So be very careful. Always read your safety data sheet because if they're lying about what's in it, they usually still tell you um, how to treat the chemicals that they are not telling you are in there when you read the precautionary measures for pouring it. So this is going to be a good base. All I'm doing right here, this is a copper base that I'm putting down. I'm going to do the wood grain right here today with you guys. I'm going to at least mess this floor up, if nothing else, while you guys are all on the live with me, because why not? You can, and I wouldn't just dump it over your plywood, but I would seal your plywood up first and then run a nice even coat on it. So, and yeah, you definitely can. Um, but follow instructions on the sealing process, and man, you'll have a really durable um, top right there. Oh, and I stepped in my drips a little bit. Leave it to Levi. Well, we put up our resin right here against anybody's product in the world, basically. This is our outdoor flex that we've ran for years, um, same recipe. And we have this in Aspen Telluride. I mean, we've bonded box drains back in that get frozen all winter that have snow plows hitting them, snow, snow blowers. So this resin right here is probably one of the most flexible, extreme, and really high-tech resins in the world. The kind of one of the neat things about this resin is the fact that it has a really, a real true common flexibility at all temperature extremes, meaning when you cool it down and most resins become very brittle at really cold temperatures, especially if they've been extended into to real hot temperatures prior in their lifetimes, they become really br brittle. And this resin does not, it has almost the same flexibility at zero degrees as it does at 120 degrees. So um, we actually go over how to repair fractures a lot. So definitely check our channel out and call us and we'll work on all those details with you. Those are very good questions, guys. This, this is actually, um, I have done all of my entryways in my last seven commercial buildings. I've had seven commercial buildings and combined, they've been about 70,000 square feet in the last 10, 12 years. And we have had this in all of our entryways and it is one of the most durable coatings. So, and very repairable. One thing, this is not a standard epoxy. This is a very high grade, very thick, very flexible resin. And if you notice, it's a little more like honey. You have to take your time and actually kind of work with it and make it flow pretty accurately. So it's definitely not water, but you can really build this up. Thanks for joining guys. Where's everybody watching from today? Ooh, 10,000 square feet a week. You know what? I always love the epoxy guys. I've been in the epoxy business for a few years and say 15 years. And I've probably done, if we wanted to brag, about a million and a half to two million square feet. But it's always dudes bragging about quantity, not quality. And out of the probably almost two million square feet I've done, I've probably only been really proud of about 100,000 square feet of it because a whole lot of that was everything from aircraft hangers to gym floors and nice work, but just boring. So 
Dude, I've been having a lot more fun doing more decorative applications lately where I can actually care about my quality. So that's kind of what made us the most successful too when we were really installing all over the world. So there used to be this Texas guy. He'd always be like, we don't measure in square feet. We measure acres down here. And then he'd try to buy product from us. And he's like, can I use my wife's credit card? I don't know why mine won't process. And he was always like shit talking to me. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay. Go do acres. I hope your mom's card clears next time. We're, you're our valuable customer, whether you do 20 square feet or 200,000 square feet. I don't really care. We did 10,000 square feet in a day with a pastor helping us. It was this youth pastor that I thought was going to wreck the whole job. And I said, dude, we were doing a free job for him. And I said, I just need you guys to actually help me here. And dude, these guys that had never poured epoxy before actually really surprised me as how good of helpers they were in a day. It's like the only time I've had help from a customer where it actually worked out really well. We don't do a lot of flakes, guys. Just we view those as a little bit, just kind of a, not the types of floors we do a ton of, but we do do some, so. What's this? Texas? No, we ain't hating on Texas. I love Texas. United States of Texas. Dude, I was in the Marine Corps with Texas. Like, dude, if you don't like Texas, you wouldn't do it very good in there. Because I think the reason we're free is because most Texas boys. What is it? Like half my unit was Texans. Best people in the world. Everything. <laughs> That's everything. My mom said that about Texas, actually. She told me that. She says it, everything but the wieners. So, Texans are badasses. What's this? Have you ever trapped yourself in a corner? I have never trapped my, not in epoxy. Not in that kind of emotional corners, yes, but not, not with epoxy, thank goodness. What is the cure time? I always say the cure time is overnight, but that's just my super easy way of telling you to stay off of it for at least 12 hours and make sure you have adequate temperature on it. If you want to get back on it, make sure that your temps are up. So I see a lot of people wanting to walk back on their floor, but they definitely are not keeping the room warm enough um, for it to cure properly. So the fast, the hotter you get it, the faster you're gonna be able to walk on it again. This is 100% solids. Our countertop is a significantly thicker viscosity, but both are 100% solids, zero VOC product. So. All right, I'm about to get to dancing, guys. We're about to try, oh, I'll leave it to leave it right there. Glad we didn't, I maybe, maybe set the corner of my T-bar down where I shouldn't have set it down. All right, now everybody is so enamored with our shoes. These are spiked shoes. And if you notice, that's a very tall, very pointy spike. And it has these little, like flaps in there that basically just catch on to the front of your shoes, boots, shoelaces, whatever, and hold these like a pair of Crocs on your feet. And then you can walk on them. And a lot of people say, I'd like to use golf shoes. The problem is, is golf shoes went away from being able to have a pointy spike like 20 years ago, 10 years ago. So if you find an old pair of golf shoes that are pointy spikes, they're money. So grab a pair, grab a size bigger too, so you can leave them tied and just walk on and off your floor. I used to have a few pairs of them and I've trashed them all. So. As far as a slip-in though, these are the very best shoes. So um, who makes these best slip-on shoes? And I don't work for them, but shoe and pro finish. We sell some, but um, these are definitely, this is not an ad for them. Um, but this is how we walk on our epoxy. Always remember too that the round cleats or the long cleats for like baseball will get really slick on here. So you do need a tall, sharp spike. And if it's not tall enough, it's not gonna keep the shoe up out of the actual epoxy, if that makes sense. And you'll be able to quickly see, you can pour through slurry almost anything. And I was at the edge of my job. I like to keep cardboard down, thick cardboard, so I can walk right directly on it. And it just really helps clean the spikes. It actually cleans epoxy off the spikes when you walk on and off the job site. And remember, these are a bit slippery too, so. You want to be... Strut, strut, strut. 
strut, strut. We can walk a little bit, but I don't know that I want to dance that much because I've never just fallen and I would love for this to not be the live that I fall. And now I have black epoxy in my hands and I am going to start pouring some very simple veins. This is going to be a little bit of a process, guys. And no, I have not done this exact process yet, so mock me all day if you want to. I, I guarantee I'll make plenty of mistakes. But we're going to learn together. No, these are, but well, and we're walking on our epoxy, and our epoxy's freaking badass and very strong, so it's just fine. You wouldn't want to slide your feet. Say what? You know what, this is my office, and we've done this, I think, 10 times, which is why you see so many um, pours of epoxy, and there's no baseboard down yet. So if we wanted to put baseboard, it'd be real easy to go over there. And yes, by the time you let 10 different classes and groups of students do anything they feel like doing on your floor, you end up with a lot of splashes of epoxy. We had a guy in the house a few weeks ago, which we had an awesome class. We poured over tile, but we had one guy in there that seemed to splash the epoxy on the walls every time and you know what though i kind of was giving him a hard time but he's one of the probably one of the best workers in the class he hustled his ass so he's probably going to clean one wall learn where to where to not throw epoxy in the future and be one of the best installers out there no what i'm walking on is all wet epoxy so i'm walking on wet epoxy so i poured a base down uh, i poured a base of wet epoxy and I just covered the whole entire thing and now I'm drizzling some black and some of my other colors around and areas on the floor. And then I'm gonna start whipping my pattern in here. I put copper down as a base and now I'm running my black liquid accents because the copper was a metallic accent actually. Um, we actually normally, if we didn't want any swirls, we'd spray alcohol on this. But right now, I'm actually wanting to leave a lot more swirls, but I'm wanting them to be linear. So this is, we're going to be working on this floor for a little bit, doing a wood grain pattern. So you're going to see a lot of this until our last pass down it. How is everybody today? Everybody have a good, happy Monday, a good weekend? I sure hope that you all have a really good weekend. If you're not having good weekends, rest better on the weekend. These spiked shoes, you can buy them right here from us, or I think Proline sells them as well. So these are the best ones. I, know. I like them because I wear boots too, but some people like the cheaper slip-on ones. The only thing that I don't like, I mean, each to their own. If you like a strap-on, strap it on. But I'd rather slip it on because I like to get on and off my floor quite a bit to be able to grab stuff for myself. And if you have a real cumbersome shoe that's tough to get on and off, it's going to be kind of frustrating to be clipping and unclipping from that shoe constantly, if that makes sense. All right, now we have some beautiful colors. If you want to learn how to do this, just come to a class. This is what we do. We live here at Countertop Epoxy to help you guys learn how to do projects just like this. Now, hopefully I, hopefully, oh, you didn't see that, you didn't see that. This is my office. Nobody, I, I always get these angry people like, that customer's going to punch you in the face. Like, well, I get mad at myself sometimes, but I promise you I'm not going to do that. Everything we do here at our office, we let customers do. We let them play with this. We let them learn how to use the T-bar. You mix epoxy in the classes. You mix it over and over. We show you timing and temperature. Um, the chemical reaction, what's actually happening. Does this self-level? Yeah, yeah self-level is pretty darn good. So right now we have no alcohol down, so it's, it will self-level much better after that. But right now we're still, we have quite a bit of work to do to it to try to get our wood grain pattern popping like we want it. Um, 
The classes are $349, and you can find the product right on our website. Link is in the bio. And um, the classes are $349, and that's a three-day, very hands-on, very involved class where if you don't like hands-on, you will not like the class because you're mixing epoxy, pouring epoxy, accenting epoxy, very hands-on over and over again until you learn how to do your white marble, black marble, travertine, soapstone. And usually we end the class with you guys making your own samples too. Um, trying to so you can bring some of your own patterns and with the techniques you learn we help you target those by the end of class and you have a lot of fun and you eat really good food and you fly right into Grand Junction don't don't fly to Denver or something and try to drive through that pass in the winter time it's really pretty over here too if you want to drive you could let this cure out on its own definitely you don't need anything additional on this to make it cure The class, totally. Yeah, the class, you, you pour a lot. I mean, we lose thousands of dollars on classes because we pour a ton of product. We're not, we're not picky. If you want to pour epoxy in class, we want you to pour epoxy. The only way to really learn this is hands-on. You, you'll never learn from somebody getting up front and just telling you how to do it like a lot of the classes are. Watching some non-artist like myself screw off with epoxy, and well, that's not my style of class. All right, now I think I'm gonna go with the brown. No, you know what? I'm gonna go with the turquoise, because I like turquoise. Okay. Mm. I don't think that's gonna be a sad color. Right? Mm. We have done a few oceans floors, but nothing major and nothing huge. And we're going to be doing one most likely right here in about a week. So I've actually helped people do some pretty big ocean floors and ocean tables and stuff like that. So my little girl just did a really cool. Can you do this to a pool? You can do this to a pool. We actually have a, two dealers that we work with very exclusively that, that do a lot of pool work. So. No, this, this product right here, you'd never crack it, and it definitely could get poured over a wood subfloor. That's one of the very common applications. People go over crack, fractured concrete. You just have to learn how to do it properly, how to prepare your substrate. Everything's about prep, and this product right here is extremely flexible. So people actually buy this a lot of times for like really high-use shop floors like Halliburton or something like that, or even just a trailer or... Um, uh, RV somewhere where you think you're going to get a lot of excessive movement over the years. So, yep, granite and quartz, extremely porous. It pours really nicely. So sad to say that because I, I started out, um, pour, doing tons of granite, um, setting it myself, and just loving granite. And then I started doing cheaper and cheaper and cheaper granite. It seemed like, and pretty soon I'll say it seemed like I had. Oh, here's our bronze. And then pretty soon I was doing concrete, and pretty soon I was back in with epoxy bidding to cover up some of the stuff I'd done eight years earlier. So, you want to know how we got these smaller cups of color? These smaller cups of color, we just separated some of our clear and we mixed these separate with some accents of their own. So, I know I'm not, I'm not really against this floor right here. A bunch of dick patterns everywhere, but aside from that, it's pretty good. Maybe that is a good part. This works very well on an enclosed, especially this specific product right here. If you ask for the Diamond Flex, that's this product right here. You're gonna love that. Whoop. Everybody likes their pink flamingo. So, kaka. If I was standing in front of a trailer house in Phoenix, Arizona, would I look like a pink flamingo? Probably with my shirt off, I'd look like a pink flamingo, a fat pink flamingo. This is an epoxy floor, a copper base. Um, we're putting black, white, um, some, some turquoise. Now I'm putting bronze down. And the reason I'm putting this down is I'm going to um, swipe this with a few different tools because I am trying to do a wood grain pattern. This is a request by one of you guys, and you wanted it on a countertop, but I thought, why don't we try to see if we can do it on a floor? I 
I think we should do a floor where we mask our walls and really splatter out here and just do the whole thing like this, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. If you came to a class, you guys could vote on stuff like that, and we'd be like, well, here's the T-bar and here's the bucket, so knock yourself out. Well, please don't knock yourself out specifically. More information? Go on countertopepoxy.com. Gold is here, but we're going to do gold last. Black. Because that's beautiful. No, this is brown. This is brown. It's beautiful too, guys. Floors and boats? Um, yeah, the, um, actually, we did the sailboat on Step Brothers. So I'm kidding that we did that. But um, yeah, it works very well in boats because it's very flexible and it's pretty lightweight for the flexibility. Boats and hose. Every time I mix, I mix a quart. Oh, sorry, that's. What if I fall? What if my aunt had balls? She'd be my uncle, so what then? I don't, I don't live my life worried about what ifs. No, I'm just kidding. Now I'm going to fall now that I was like joking around and being a smart ass. I'll be sure to slip and fall now. Can you do shower floors? I can do shower floors. This is an amazing product for it, too. Come to a class and you do shower floors. How do you mask off lines and how to clean If you remove the masking tape before the product fully sets, that's the easiest way. And you can also use a really tough wire filament tape often and go in early the next day. Don't let it overly cure, but give yourself like 10 hours, 12 hours, and go back in and cure it again then. So, or sorry, peel it then. Um, I don't think here at this office we have a full room with walls and ceilings, but quite a few showers have been done like that. Big walk-in showers, pour really big marble pieces and except they're way more durable and flexible than real marble and lighter and easier to install. And you can actually pour whatever color pattern you want. And it doesn't cost you any different on like real granite. Seven, three, this floor here, we actually only mixed one kit. So if we get this done, this would cost for a dealer, this, this whole entire floor would cost you about $300 right here. So um, for a dealer and about 450 or something like that for somebody that's not a dealer. So here's our gold. How do we clean it? Um, soap and water is the easiest. A little bit of vinegar even in water works really well. So you can clean this easier than a window. It's, it's very easy to clean. Um, the bacteria doesn't grow on it. It's very non-porous. All right, do we have another color? This is our last color. Okay, I'm excited, but now I'm kind of scared because the comments are going to start coming like, dude, who let that guy mess our floor up? So forgive me for what I'm about to do, but I'm going to try. Um, the reason I'm not wearing a mask is this product specifically right here is a true zero VOC, 100% solids product, meaning there's no volatile organic content evaporating out of this to cure the actual product. So there's actually zero odor and we're in a well-ventilated room. But just because companies advertise that does not mean you're safe. So always look at the SDS because many times they lie and they put about 3% very harmful um, evaporative product, products in 3% because that's the threshold that was set. Um, by a bunch of lobbyists and the EPA and the FDA. We don't want that. From the windows to the walls, yeah, you can definitely put this on walls. Mm. You want me at your house putting it on walls, trust me. Just glad people, I'm glad at least five of you showed up to watch me get do my morning wood here. How's everybody today? Everybody, anybody really sick of my stupid dad jokes? I'm sorry. You guys do. You might want to come out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You want to know something? Let me actually hold the phone, and you can go grab the other spike shoes, too, if you want. You know what? It's really, it's great traction. Okay. So, guys, am I still live? I think I'm still live. Okay. So, we just won't, if I mess something up while he's gone, we just won't tell him. Oh, there's a brand new pair over on that cart. You can open. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to show you. I have a, a V-notch squeegee right here. And it just has notches. And I believe this is 3 eighths, So it's a pretty tall notch. 
And now I am going to start running this back and forth between the walls. Now, understanding that I may have to add baseboards in here later. And no, I'm not sure this is going to be my method that I complete the entire floor with. Now the little V notches will stay here for a moment and then it should self level pretty nicely back into the floor. So and these floors, I mean, I used to do these with concrete quite a bit and whatnot. But just remember, be patient, be patient. It'd be better to swipe across the floor a few extra times and move really consistently than to try to force your pattern all with one big swipe with like a roller or something that's really aggressive. And I'm sorry, I'm definitely not. I know you guys are waiting for Michael to come back. I haven't read a single comment. They're all probably telling me to screw off and follow me epoxy, as I probably deserve, because I'm a crappy videographer here, but. This is Michael and his dancing shoes. Just don't lose your glasses, Michael. He said he's gonna pray to God. You guys should pray to God with him as well. The biggest thing is if one shoe pops out, because um, you have the smooth top. No, just the tops of those shoes are smooth that you're wearing, so they'll have a tendency to slide. And if they are, just stand still, and I'll come over and I'll kick it back on for you. Okay. So and I, think, I think this is gonna go great anyways. This epoxy right here, we poured four gallons on this. That would cost a regular DIYer probably around $400 to do on their own with color and everything here. Very doable. We will have about an hour and a half with this product as long as we get it applied to the floor correctly in a correct period of time, as long as we're not screwing off for too long. We'll, we'll have a very easy, probably hour and a half, two hours. Now this will look messy for a min minute, but I think it should actually come together pretty nicely in a moment. Just an old epoxy floor that we'd poured before, guys. So nothing too special. We mix the colors in a bucket with a drill. We just did that a little before the class, before the video, because it took me about 15 minutes to get them all mixed. I didn't want you guys bored out of your minds watching me with mixed colors, but we do have videos on that, so you're welcome to watch that as well. I'm gonna try one other, one other method. And like I said, this isn't necessarily, dude, I kind of like, why do I love the droplet effect so much? That's weird, but I'm loving that. Bubbles very easily um, with alcohol on most flooring and a torch on often on other flooring. But one thing I try to recall, remember is never mix the two because alcohol lights on fire. So when I say try, just make sure you remember that. Oh yes, that final swipe with the T-bar, that's gonna bring this together pretty nice actually. Say what? How am I reading the comments? I have this guy, he whispers and tells me the comments. He kind of talks and he's reading them. So I'm sorry if I'm not hearing all of them. He, he definitely says very important things that I do not hear. Um, how many square feet? How many square feet? This right here is about 300, I believe, with what we have right here. So. Oh, that's actually swiping really, really, really nice off that. Now I'm gonna continue with the T-bar and see if I can get a def decent swipe effect just with it. Our 
I am sorry about the title, guys. Sometimes I have horrible ideas. But, but it made you guys show up, didn't it, now? I'm liking the T-bar just as much as I like that V-notch prior. So I think we're getting all the work we need right here with this. And the cure time, I generally say just overnight. Give it, give it adequate time, guys. Give, give it, you know, a good 12 hours is generally what we say. But turn that heat up if you're concerned at all. So, and just make sure you're patient with it and don't get on it too soon. If you want to give it a little extra time, give it 24 to 48 hours and you're going to have a really rock hard floor that you can park stuff on and do whatever you need to. But a lot of that's mixing and timing. So just remember, following the instructions is a big, plays a very key role in the curing um, and all the things you guys want it to do. So color stability and everything else. What do you all think of that? I like that actually. I don't think that's the worst wood grain to you. Notice I'm overlapping my runs just a little bit and I'm pulling really slow too, really slow because I want this to be very level behind my T-bar because I do not want to have to come back across the floor and walk in it for any reason. Sorry guys, I, I stopped breathing. Dude, anybody else here go on hikes and like, I don't work out like crazy, but I work out a little bit, and sometimes I'm, okay, I think I'm kind of a badass. No, I'm just kidding. But um, you don't feel that lame, and then I'll go on a hike somewhere, and it'll be like a 90-year-old person, and everybody stops, and they're all just talking, and I'm just over in the corner just trying to catch my breath, just hoping nobody hears me. <sighs> it's always some, like, 84-year-old lady that doesn't even seem to be phased either. You know, I thought about that as well, but I'm kind of, I'm loving this, guys. What, what brand is this? What brand? This is countertopepoxy.com. Our shoes are not messing with it because my shoes are spike shoes. I'm a pimp. These are my dancing shoes, guys. These are my dancing shoes. We are pouring, attempting to pour, a wood grain pattern into epoxy, and I'm doing the final swiping right now. We poured it on top of a fully prepped floor. I poured a copper base, and then I drizzled my colors back and forth, as you see really near the camera. And then I ran a V-notch a little bit, and I wasn't really, I don't think it really got a whole lot more movement than my T-bar is getting just fine by itself, so now I am T-barring this. I'm a big fan of a T-bar. Nobody asked me if I liked my new boots. Da, da, da. What's everybody grateful for today? I'm going to just tell you guys. That I'm, man, Michael's, I'm grateful for Michael making noise. Sorry, I'm kidding, guys. Um, grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for work. I'm grateful for a lot of the things that we struggle to avoid, but really God doesn't want us to avoid it because it's what builds us and makes us who we are. So. so I'm trying to learn to be grateful for the things that I can't change and recognize that usually it's just something about my own perspective or my own life that needs to change. So I'm trying to be positive and always speak life. And, oh, I deviated there. I've heard some amazing gratitude from a lot of you all too. So really cool a lot of you guys cancer survivors all kinds of survivors out there and I, I don't care I, I think everybody has something that they've most likely they could most likely consider themselves a survivor of if they were to tell their story so thank you anybody for being here on this live and sharing what you're grateful for sharing what you're grateful for on our live We are in Western Colorado. It's called Grand Junction, Colorado. 
Um, we're on the western edge of the state, and we do classes here once a month. And we hope to join you, or we hope you guys join us in our class upcoming. We do do a class once a month. And as you guys will see, I like to walk. I walk directly onto the cardboard, and all that does is it cleans my shoes. So. Levy, your line's about as crooked as a crackhead's. I don't even know. That was a crooked line right there I was leaving. I'll just come down here and pretend I wasn't doing it. Ah! There. So there is a good one, and I may, well, some of you guys wanting me to go back out across it with the V-notch. You guys are probably just telling me to mess my floor up, but since you guys want me to, and I kind of have to go pee, I reckon I'll go back with the V-notch instead. And these are my spike shoes I'm stepping on on the cardboard. And as you notice, I like to slip in and out of them. I'll step directly off across here. Now, this is kind of against my better judgment, but if you guys want to see a T-barring, Sorry, a V-notch, Gooigi. See what kind of wood grain it chops in here. I'll try to breathe a little less heavy, guys. I promise I'm not making love with this T-bar applicator or anything when he's not watching. I don't know, what do you all think? I, I really like how it was swiped with the T-bar more. Than this, I'm not against that look in the floor a little bit, but I feel like it's almost a little too uniform. And I don't think wood, at least my wood, is not that uniform. So I think I'm gonna sadly leave it as is because I keep jacking up my floor every time I do it. So I'm gonna come back across really clean. I do too, I think, I think you guys are correct. And this is your guys' live anyway, so if you guys tell me to leave it, I leave it. Sometimes, I'm sorry for the ones that have told me to leave it, but I didn't. We are in Grand Junction, Colorado, guys. We are on the western side of Colorado. I am actually not going to pop bubbles on this with alcohol or a torch right now. And the reason being is all I'm going to do is clean up my edges on here, keep my wood grain. I am actually going to sand it lightly tomorrow if there is anything needed. If there is any air bubbles that have not popped, and I'll show you guys, you guys can see this. Um, and then I'll apply a thin clear because the one thing is I could walk out and torch it, but I would be tor walking out and torching a floor on spikes, and most likely I'd be stepping into differently pigmented areas of the floor and really manipulating that inadvertently and leaving spike marks around in other colors. Um, I could spray alcohol in it as well, but alcohol will leave a real, um, a really neat modeled pattern if you're trying to just do a metallic floor, but when you're trying to leave these really sharp, clean swipes of wood grain, I think we'd really wreck it with anything. So I think the best thing to do, and I can't believe Levi is saying this, but I might quit while I'm ahead and not mess it up. So I hope you guys, watch, I hope you guys enjoyed the live. And I'll show you, I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough and just show you guys exactly what this floor was prior and kind of what we went over. So the floor you're looking at was actually over a tile. This originally was an all 24 by 24 removable tiles that were on a grid system, everything I'm walking on here. And then it stepped up right here about two inches into another tiled room here on a slab, but at least that was on concrete. Um, but all these tiles where we walked were just um, really loose rattling around. And we have a non-sag epoxy that we use for walls and ceilings. And we trialed that in and basically grouted our wood floor or 
grouted our tile down to the floor, all the removable tiles. And we poured a slurry really thin with this and sanded. Um, and then we were able to come back in and decoratively, instead of straight swipes like we did on the wood grain, we just poured our different colors and t-bored them in. And we have a video of it actually, and I plastered this. Um, but as you can see, this is what you can get when just going directly over your old tile floors, wood floors, concrete, failed concrete, doesn't really matter. So give us a call, join us for a class, and thank you guys for putting up with my heavy breathing. And I don't know, I think I try not to breathe because I get all nervous on my lives. So um, my little girl will come here for if anybody cares, I do. But um, and she's going to do her little um, ocean reveal of her ocean table she did here within the, the week sometimes. So God bless you guys. Hope you have a badass day. Kill a pedophile until Jeffrey Epstein's list gets released. And I'll see you guys tomorrow and show you what we do with the floor. Man, that turned out good. Thanks for the love. Hit the follow too.